The following paid program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Sherry Dameron Ministries. Thank you for partnering with Sherry Dameron Ministries. Your financial support is helping us bring the Word of God to people around the world. Or I've heard people say this to me before. God doesn't work for me. And I want to look at them and say, no, baby, he doesn't. You didn't employ God. Although we have birthed a generation that thinks that they did. So what's happened is that God's word has been misrepresented. And it's opened up a door for hopelessness. Why? Because Satan knows if he can steal your hope, he can kill your destiny. You have to be weak before he can carry you. You have to be helpless, not hopeless. You mean that it was the pressure that tightened the rope? You mean that it takes two opposing forces to be able to make me secure as he's tying you to him and he's tying him to you and he's making your not stronger and he's making you stronger? Because we are blessed and highly favored. Because we're the head and not the tail. That's why we're fighting the battle. Because there are gifts and treasures in stored up inside of us. Because, God, we are yours. That's why we're fighting the battle. And that's why so much more we need to be joined together. this morning and I'm going to use one scripture now I'm going to say this if you notice on your notes this morning your scriptures are not written out you have a reference but you don't have the scripture I did that on purpose number one you need to develop an affinity with your Bible you need to develop a relationship with your Bible now I'm going to tell you I understand we're in a, in a generation where people look it up on their tablets and their phone and that's okay uh, that, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever that's to, to each his own I couldn't care less where you get it where you look it up at as long as you get it that's all that matters to me but there's something about holding that book in your hand and being able to mark in your book and be able to make little notations over in the, over in the corner and there, with me I've had one, one particular Bible, and I've got many, but I've had one particular Bible since forever. I can't even tell you how old that Bible is. But if you ask me where a scripture is, I don't know exactly where it is, but I can tell you it's in the top left-hand corner. I can, I can tell you that. I Wait just a minute. Let me just thumb through because it's over there, and it, it's on that page that's got a little rip on it, and it's a little bit worn and torn. I know where it is because, see, I've been in it. I know where it's located. So there's just something about, I encourage you, if you do not have a Bible that you can, that you can really study and that you can, there's something about it that you can hold, that you can cry over, you ought to have tear stains in your Bible. You ought to have places marked in your Bible where you circled a scripture and you said, from God to me. You ought to see, uh, most of my Bible says, from God to me. Some of it, he hasn't yet made a work in my life, but it's all from God to me. Amen. Somebody said to me one time, you don't take that thing literal, do you? Well, I sure do. Every single word of it, I take it to heart because he didn't write it for no reason. I want to build everything off of one scripture this morning. It, it kind of sums up the whole, the whole thing. And it says this, Isaiah 40 and 8. It says, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. If that is your foundation, everything else will flow out of that. Everything must be predicated upon the word of God. Not on, the abil on my ability to study Greek and Hebrew. Not on my ability to teach you or to articulate to you my thoughts, my opinions, my ideas. No. Everything should be predicated and built upon the word of God. Because the grass will fade and the flower will wither. But the Lord, word of the Lord is going to stand. 
it's going to be there. Okay? And if you will get in your word, then you can begin to check some of this stuff that's being said to you. Some of these things that come to you, you think that it, you, you just get all upset about it. If you go to your word, you'll find out, wait a minute, that was straight from hell. I ain't got to receive that. That ain't in my word. Okay, you need to get in your word, okay? In a nutshell, that one scripture, that one scripture, if it is your anchor, then you have everything to gain and you have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. The problem is this. The problem is that we live in a fallen world where the principalities of hell are busy. They're busy about their business. Why aren't we? Where the principalities of hell are busy bombarding us with darts called subliminal thoughts. Subliminal thoughts. They come from TV shows. They come from movies, co-workers, advertisements that you're just riding along the road. And all of a sudden there you see this big billboard up there. It's a subliminal thought. It was placed there for a reason. You get subliminal thoughts. He's throwing darts at you during a casual conversation. And the truth is, is that sometimes we have absolutely no control over those things that, that come to us. We didn't mean to see it. We didn't mean to hear it. I can't help it that that fool put that billboard upside that road. I can't help that. So if I'm not completely founded and rooted on the Word of God, when I see those things that I didn't even mean, see, everything is not what you did to yourself. Some things are things that people did to you. Some things are things that people did that don't even know you, that they did it to you. But if you're rooted and you're grounded in the Word of God, then no thing can move you. Not one person can move you. Nothing can come your way and shake you. Now, if I'm rooted and grounded in the Word of God, now I am not at the mercy of your bad day. Do you see what I'm saying? Sometimes we fall at the mercy of somebody else's bad day. Have you ever went to work and somebody else was having a bad day and it ruined yours? You were going, I was doing pretty good till I got here and saw you. God bless your sweet little heart. Okay? If you've got the Word of God, you can either combat their attitude or walk away from their attitude, shake it off like, you know, like old dog when he falls in the mud. He shakes it off and he keeps on going. That's what you can do. You can shake it off. It's a spirit from hell. And the problem is it's been loosed in the church. But here is the real problem and the danger. The church has taught it how to thrive. Oh my, it might get bumpy. So the church has taught this, this spirit how to thrive. How have we taught it how to thrive? Let me tell you how we've done that. We teach scriptures. We extrapolate scriptures out of the word of God and we teach them as to only encourage and pep up the people. Now I want to be encouraged and pepped up too. We all want to be encouraged and pepped up. And the word is a great encourager and it's a great pepper. It's a little bit more than that. It is, we have made it our business in the church to teach five ways to get rich and six ways to get out of debt. Well, I can tell you one way to get out of debt. Quit spending when you ain't got the money. But that's what we teach because that's what the people want. Give me those steps. You study those steps, and you give me the steps, and if I like them, I'll, I'll follow them. But if not, you know, if it causes me to do anything, I ain't going to follow them. If you want me to change some of my habits, well, then I'm, I'm going to find me something else. But that's what we teach because that's what people like. We, we teach three ways to be famous because now it's big to come to church because the church can make you famous. Well, if you're trying to get famous, you're in the wrong place. Have it your way. That's what we're teaching everybody. So, when we don't get what we prayed for, we blame God because that's what the church told us. The problem is inaccurate teaching. That's the problem. And what the inaccurate teaching has done is it has fostered a spirit of selfishness in the church. A spirit of selfishness. 
So what we've done is we've taught the church how to live wrapped up in emotions. We've taught the church how to live out of our emotions rather than teaching the church how to live wrapped up in trusting God. It's not about getting what you want. It's about will you trust God when you don't? Will you still walk with him? Will you still talk with him when you don't get what you prayed for? So as a result, when God doesn't answer us, we innately become hopeless. Oh, I went to church and I followed all the steps and they told me that I was going to be rich and they told me I was going to get a husband and they told me I was going to get a wife and they told me that all of my children were going to prophesy and that they were going to dream dreams and have visions and they told me that my belly was going to flow forth rivers of living water and they just cut off my water at my house. I am hopeless. <laughs> hopeless is what that has birthed. And the thing is, Satan intended it that way the whole time. He set us up is what he did. So now we begin to think, what's the point of keeping, keeping on trying? What's the point? Why should we believe God? We have, we're even in an era today, it used to wasn't like this, but we're in an era today that when people don't get what they want, now they think, you know what, maybe I'll try a different faith. I'll start searching and see if I can find me a different God because that one that y'all talking about ain't working. Well, if we talk about him right, he'd work. So I'm just going to try me a different faith. Or I've heard people say this to me before. God doesn't work for me. And I want to look at them and say, no, baby, he doesn't. You didn't employ God. Although we have, bought, we have, have birthed a generation that thinks that they did. But God is not, does not work for you. You are exactly right. So what's happened is that God's word has been misrepresented. And it's opened up a door for hopelessness. Why? Because Satan knows if he can steal your hope, he can kill your destiny. That's all he's got to do. And if he kills your destiny, he's hurt God all over again. Because believe it or not, God has something invested in your destiny. He desires it for you more than you desire it. He desires it so much, he sent his son to die for it. But if you ever walk into hopelessness, it's over. So I want to talk about a few men today from the Bible, and then I'm going to let you go. First, I want to talk from Solomon, who was the wisest man to ever live. Proverbs 13 and 12 said, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Can I tell you why I can preach this today? Can I tell you why I can talk like this today? Because I've just come through a hopelessness. Because I've just come through a battle with hopelessness. Honey, when hopelessness takes a hold of you, you got to fight that devil. you got to wrestle that devil. You better not give it an inch and you better not give it a mile. You're going to have to fight your way out of that one. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night fighting hopelessness. Because when you go to bed, it don't go away. It'll sneak up in your dreams. It'll sneak up at your job. It'll sneak up in your husband. All of a sudden, your husband will become hopeless. Your children will become hopeless. You'll be cooking a hopeless meal. You'll be fixing a hopeless ice cream. Everything becomes hopeless. It is a spirit that takes over everything that you do. Am I telling the truth? I'm sorry. I'm talking to the wrong crowd. Ain't none of y'all never been hopeless. Y'all making me look like the only fool. Your pastor has not been fighting this alone. I have a feeling God's got a word for somebody. Solomon is telling us about Satan's favorite tool, hopelessness. So if I teach you to live based on your emotions, then you're going to live a defeated life. You're going to live a life on a roller coaster. I don't know what's worse, a roller coaster or a defeat. They're both the same to me. But if I teach you to live your life from your spirit, if you can ever learn to live your life from your spirit, can I tell you which can only be accomplished through, the, through God's word. There's no other way to live out of your spirit except through the word of God. So if I teach you to live your life from your spirit, then your hope is unshakable. 
He can't touch you there. He can touch you in your mind. He can touch you in your will. He can touch you in your emotions. He can touch you in what you want. But he cannot touch you in your spirit. Because in your spirit, your God is unshakable. Your God is your solid rock. Your God is your hope. Your God is your future. You don't get hope just by hoping for it. You get hope by knowing the author of hope. The author and the finisher of your faith. The author and the finisher of your hope. You get hope from digging down in the spirit and getting down in that honey well. You get hope from getting in the word of God and learning the rock of all. You get hope from learning who your God is because he is your hope in the middle of a hopeless situation. That's why Paul said, ain't none of these things moving me. If he'd have been living out of his emotions like we do, they would have moved him. He would have been swayed. He would have been shaken. But Paul didn't try to figure it out. Paul didn't try to try, try to reason it out. Paul didn't try to figure out, am I going to make money off of this movie or not? Is this thing look like it's going to be a good thing or not? Paul said, God, did you tell me to do it? God said, yeah. Paul said, all right, here we go. Do you see what I'm saying? You'll reason your way out of a God thing if you're not real careful. God told me to teach you this. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? He said, teach them how to respond when things don't work out. Teach them how to respond when things don't work out. So that when all hell is breaking loose, the spirit of truth can rise up in you and say, I didn't get the job, but I'm going to make it. My wife left me, but I'm going to make it. Some of y'all shout about that. My husband left me, but I'm going to make it. My children didn't come home last night, but I'm going to make it. I didn't get the raise, but I'm going to make it. You got to know how to respond when all hell breaks loose. Jesus, have mercy, y'all. That's good news. That's good news. You mean that I can sail on when all hell breaks loose? That's exactly what I mean. You mean that I could shout the victory when all hell breaks loose? That's exactly what I mean. You mean that while I'm sitting up here by myself and I'm lonely and I'm never going to have love again, I can still sail on? That's exactly what I'm saying. About like Sterling telling me that all of his dreams was over because he missed a punt. I said, baby, don't stop dreaming yet. <laughs> You're 17. You got a few more punts to go. Don't stop dreaming yet. Thank you for watching I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. I am so excited about what God is doing in this ministry. We are carrying the gospel around the world. Would you like to be a part of that? Would you like to partner with us? We are asking for your help. I can't do it without you. Would you just come on board, pick up the phone and call 888-557-SDM7. Somebody on the other end of the line would like to walk you through partnership with us. You have a part in winning the lost world in bringing the broken and the bruised and the hurting to Jesus Christ, telling them the story of Jesus. You can call or either go online to sherrydameron.org. Look up at the top and you see that little partner tab. Click on that and it'll walk you through simple steps of becoming a partner with us. I want to thank you in advance and I want to hear from you. Tell us what God is doing in your life as a result of partnering with Sherry Dameron Ministries. Now join us for the rest of the message in progress and I still believe. Living life in your spirit is not about being weird because that's what we've taught. It's about being weird or speaking in tongues quoting scripture to manipulate God. Boy, we got a hold of that teaching, and I guarantee you there's not a person sitting under the sound of my voice that does not have some of those tapes. Name it and claim it. I understand name it and claim it, and I like it too, but you better, I'm going to say it one more time, claim that Mercedes, but claim them payments. Okay? You can go ahead and get the Mercedes, but them payments are going to be rough, baby. I'm just trying to tell you. 
better turn around and walk off that lot and go get you a central is what you better do. <laughs> Pay for that and then work on claiming something else. Y'all know I'm, t- I'm telling you the truth because I've been there. Okay? It's about living life that desires the person of God. Do you desire to know the person of God more than the things of God? Because here's the thing. What good is all of that stuff that we've been claiming and no peace? What good does it do you if you have no peace? What good is it if you get the girl and you ain't got no peace? You got her. How's that working for you? What good is it when you get the man and he was cute as a button, but then the truth came out and you ain't got no peace? Living life in the Spirit is trusting God when you can't see Him. It's trusting God when you can't feel Him. It's trusting God when you can't trace him. That's living out of your spirit. And that is the only way you will prosper when all hell breaks loose. You mean I'm supposed to prosper when I'm going through a battle? Yes. God did not send the battle. I said God did not send. Yes, that's exactly what I said. God did not send the battle for you to not come out of it prosperous. Sometimes you might come out of it with your tail feathers on fire. Your britches might be smoking, but I guarantee you, you'll prosper out of it somewhere if you'll trust God. When the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hopelessness steals the gift of God at the root because it steals your desire. When you stop desiring to move forward, when you stop desiring to grow, When you stop desiring to go up the ladder and to know more of God and to hear more of God, when you stop desiring that, you're dead. You're done for. So where does desire come from? Anybody want to know where desire comes from? The Word of God. You develop desire from the Word of God. Because if I develop desire anywhere else other than the Word of God, I've got an ungodly desire. And it's going to destroy me. Always remember, the enemy always has a counterfeit for the real. Always. Anytime you have a desire, check it against the Word of God. And if it balances with the Word of God, hang on to it and walk with it. Okay? The Word of God fills us with godly desire. It fills us with destiny. And it fills us with determination. Those are the three things that you should always get out of your Word. Always ask yourself when you read a scripture, how can I find desire in this scripture? Show it to me, Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. He's not to make you speak in tongues. He's so that he can reveal Jesus, and Jesus is desire. Always ask, where is, how can I find destiny in this scripture? And how can I find determination in this scripture? And the Holy Spirit will show you. Let's talk about King, so- King David. We talked about King Solomon. Let's talk about his daddy. Oh, King David, the great Solomon, Sol- psalmist that he was. Psalm 71 and 1 says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. If David was praying that, he must have had a reason. He must have been going through something. Let me never be put to confusion. How many is it besides me that would love to live a life where you wasn't confused? It'd be so nice to wake up in the morning, I hear you, and and not to be confused. You know, I went to bed confused, I woke up confused. But can I tell you, that's not what this word means. Because I thought it did, because I shouted about it. I thought, praise God, I don't have to be confused. But here's what it means. It means ashamed. It means become anxious. How many are having anxiety attacks? Everywhere I go, people say that all the time. Oh, I'm having an anxiety attack. I, I, I get anxious about it. No, that's not what the Word of God said. The Word of God said, let me not be put to, a sh- to shame. Let me not become anxious. And it says, let me not become dry. That's the problem. That's why we need the rain. 
because we become dry when we feel like God has not answered our prayer. But if we'd have been taught correctly, we wouldn't have been worried about God answering our prayer. We'd have realized he answered it already. All we got to do is walk into it. Do you hear me? I just said a mouthful. Somebody needs to get that. We've gotten to a place where we try to make God answer a prayer and God give us what we want. God's already got the answer for you, honey. He's tried the word of God is to help you walk to get it. So stop praying for it. It's there already. Ask God to teach you how to walk. If I put my trust in God, then there's not a man, there's not a thing, nor myself, because you are your biggest enemy, that can make you become dry and stagnant and overwhelmed by life. Because I'll react to every situation from a well of water that flows up out of my belly. If I will put my faith in him. David cried out of his heart. And he said Lord. He said deliver me in your righteousness. And cause me to escape. Incline your ear unto me. And save me. Be strong in my habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Y'all David saw God as his resort. We want to go to a resort in Hawaii. David said God you are my resort. You are my resort. You are what I run to. He said, you have given commandment to save me. Did you hear me? God has given commandment to save you. And you are my rock and my fortress. That is what gives you hope. It's when I get to the word of God and I read where David was hopeless and David was fighting all hell. All hell was breaking loose. And all of a sudden, in the middle of his running to the rock of Gibraltar, running to the rock of God, he said, oh, wait a minute, God. You have given commandment to save me. Can I tell you the angels are coming in your situation. The angels are coming to your mess. The angels are on the way to your mess. And God is the one that said, I gave them commandment to go pluck you up out of your hell. God is not a man that he should lie. And he ain't going to mess up when he commands something. You can trust me, it's going to happen. He said, deliver me, O God, out of the hand of the wicked. You mean David fell in the hand of the wicked too? Yes. You thought that it was just your neighbor. There were some wicked people back there too. David was a man after God's own heart. But he's sitting here praying for God to deliver him. And can I tell you something? Because David was a man after God's own heart, that's why he was having to pray for God to deliver him. Because he was a man after God's own heart, that's why all hell assailed. Because you are a man or a woman after God's own heart, that's why the devil is coming after you. That's why he's trying to steal your hope. That's why he wants to make your children sick. That's why he's trying to take your job. That's why he's trying to take your mind. That's why he's trying to take you down. If you didn't have a heart after God, why would he bother you? You ought to get excited about it. Why are you so shocked when people talk about you? I don't know why it shocks you. They're talking about you because there's something about you. And they can't put their finger on it. The only thing they know is that every time you walk in the room, conviction falls on them. And they don't know what to do about it. They don't understand that everything you touch, it might look like it's a battle now, but it always turns up roses. And they can't figure that out. Can I tell you something? That's why they're talking about you. this message has touched you and it's pulling on you and you'd like to have it in its entirety, please pick up the phone and call 888-557-SDM7. God bless you and thank you. To order Pastor Sherry Dameron's complete sermon, CD, or book, please call 1-888-557-7367 or visit sherrydameron.org.